welcome to this episode of Avatar Face to Face. My name is Jewel Kent Thomas and it is so good to have you with us today. We'd love to bring you all of the information and the inspiration from the arts and culture world in Westchester and beyond. So that being said, we have a phenomenal, can I say that again? We have a phenomenal artist with us today. Her name is Sandra Reeves Phillips. And let me tell you, she's been in the business and been performing for almost 50 years. She has so many credits to her name that if I sat here and read them all to you, she would not be able to get a word in edgewise because it would take the half hour that this show is and so much more. But let me tell you that theatrically, uh, jazz festivals, performances, cabarets, she's done it all around the world. And she sung for an audience of 8,000 at the Vatican. She's had a private audience with the Pope. Uh, she has so many awards from Odelco to Drama League. Uh, again, I can't share them all with you, but you're going to meet a phenomenal young woman. We want to welcome to the show today, Sandra Reeves Phillips. It's a long old road. Oh, yeah. But I'm gonna find the end And when I get here I'm gonna shake hands with my friend <laughs> Hello, Sandra I mean, that's an entrance see, That's how I need see? to start this show That's how I started singing with the natural voice Oh my Went back Lord. to my and roots what a powerhouse of a voice it is Thank you, darling you know. Well, you know, when, when I came along as a young girl Working in the fields of South Carolina where I was born yeah. We would work from 6 in the morning to 6 in the evening and to forget how hot it was, one person a miles away in the mm. fields would start singing a song, everybody would pick up on it, right. and you just heard nothing but natural voices all around you for hours and hours, oh. and that's really how I learned to holler okay. in tune, okay. because people say, well, how did you learn to sing? There was no technique. Okay. There were no lessons. All right. You just did what you felt. It just came, seemed like God just put it in the earth and just came up through you and you, holla, you know. And you just, oh. and you're, you're in the fields ah. mm -hmm. and you're singing. And yes. you're singing with all of the, all the other the voices, young people old, and all the young. other, uh, and the elders yeah. all around you. But on Sunday, I was with the Cradle Rock Choir in yeah. our church in the little church. So mm -hmm. I learned a little more about unity and singing with other people. Okay. That's where I learned that. But when we left home, we were picking cotton and to cropping tobacco in South Carolina. Mm. But when we left there, when I was about nine or 10 years old, after my grandfather died, yes. uh, my grandmother joined the migrant workers trucks. They came through town mm -hmm. soliciting for workers and she packed up everything that she could in a couple of boxes or trunk and put everything in storage. We never went back to get it. And we t travel up and down the road until I was almost 15. Okay. And that's when my mother, who had gone away to Brooklyn as a teenage girl to right. work, uh -huh. um, she came and got me and started putting me in, in talent shows. Wow. I did not want to go. I wanted to learn to sing opera after I heard Caruso and all okay. those people. That's where my heart has always been, is to sing opera, but I never, they never afforded lessons. Okay, mm -hmm. so here you are, a young girl of 15. Mm -hmm. you, you've been working in the fields yes. up until that point, yep. and then all of a sudden you transition to Brooklyn. No, snatched to Brooklyn. Snatched. I did to not want to go. Okay. I, it was a way of life I was so used to, and I was comfortable with my grandmother. Right. But once I got there, I adjusted to my mother, who was 13 years, 14 years older than I was. Okay. So it felt more like my sister trying to take right, care of me. Right. And I'm, I am a product of rape. So mm. I wanted to share that with some of your audiences because they figure, you know, if you're born in a situation that's not kind or abusive or whatever, mm -hmm. that you can't get out of it, but you get a dream. You pray about it, you yes. hold on to it, and if you've, you've been chosen for something, and find out what that something is, right. and that's what it is with me. I didn't know what I wanted to do or what I could do. I wanted to remain a farmer, Okay. but God had something greater in store for me. And at right. 15, I got my first gig out of the amateur shows in Brooklyn at uh -huh. the Brevoort Theater, right. and uh, a scout was there one night and saw me singing thought I was 21 years old because mm. I was a big girl, Curves. Okay. And they hired me for the Brooklyn Baby Grand. Wow. And that was the beginning of my singing career. $15 a night, three shows a night, four shows a week. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I thought 
what else? You moved into the world. <laughs> and then world. the people began to see me there and hire me for private affairs and things like that. But mm -hmm. it wasn't until I started my family that things escalated in the music business because people had heard about me. So I, mm -hmm. I did uh, a record when I was about 18. I got married when I was just about to turn 18. So I did my first record with uh, Juggie Murray Sue Records. Don't you know, did you see that? You know, sounded like the ch almost like the chipmunks. And <laughs> then from there, I did a, a record with Epic OK. okay. A, a guy named Ken Williams wrote it, beautiful mm -hmm. ballad. Right. And then I had to go to Michigan, get that Detroit thing going on. Yeah. Where without sunshine. I was pregnant with my daughter then. Where with <laughs> <laughs> Bowser, you know. But this is the way the life happened. I yeah. didn't have much to do with it. We just mm. listened to that voice. And my mother encouraged me to follow that path okay and many times I was studying beauty culture I thought I was going to be a cosmetician right. and got 800 hours in and only needed 200 more and dropped out of school and, look at that. and became a full-time mom you know okay. so there are dreams out there and they've already been constructed for you it's your decisions and the choices that you make getting to them right and I made so some now, bad choices now okay I did well yeah because we I was do. an angry child all right mm -hmm. all right but you had, you were singing now, you, mm -hmm. you were d discovered, and you didn't want to be a singer, although mm -hmm. you wanted to study opera. Yeah. At so that then what, what, what guided you? How, what were you singing at that point? I was singing R&B, blues, mm -hmm. soul, James Brown, Otis okay. Redding, uh, Etta James, yes. Maxine Brown, you, you name it. I sang everybody's song because oh, yeah. everybody was stepping on Aretha Franklin. Ah! Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was, that was my, one of my heroes right there, Miss mm. Riri. Uh, and and gospel, yes. old yeah, hymns. That, that that was your your yeah. foundation. Yeah, from gospel. And I worked at the Cotton Club. This is where where another transition came in. Um, they hired me for a very long time at the Cotton Club, Mr. J. And uh, I was singing with Chuck Jackson up yes. there uh -huh. doing breakfast shows. After all the bars closed, we would start singing, say from four in the morning to seven in the morning. Okay. And I was hanging out with him, singing uh, all kind of knock on wood and ring my bell. And and people were like. You got something in you that sound a little like Bessie Smith. Mm. You sound a little like this one and that one. And I, I you, why don't you sing some Billy Holiday? I didn't like that music. Oh. I didn't know that music. Wow. And I thought Billy sounded too slow and whiny. Uh -huh. But when I read about him, yes. when I went into it and I said, okay, I'm going to do a one night tribute to some of these ladies that right. people have been shouting at me. Yes. And when I studied Billy, I still didn't feel comfortable bringing her songs in. Mm -hmm. And the night that I got on the stage, it's like the chill bumps. Wow. Talking about the life that she, the abusive life, and right. seeing someone hung from a tree. And all of a sudden, I do a little lead in from some of her conversation. I've been told that nobody sing the word hung like I do on the word love. Good morning, heartache, and, and went mm. right into it, and the audience went right with me. So that's how I, I, I developed the great ladies, Ma Rainey, Bessie right, Smith, right. Ethel Waters, Dinah Washington, Billie Holiday. Jo yes. I did Josephine Baker for a while, and the South was not having me come out in a corset and a banana belt. Okay. No nudity, a yeah. bodysuit. But they would not, that was not going to happen in South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, below, mm -hmm. below the borders. So when did, when did you start with this particular production of The Great Lady? May of 80, May of 80, and mm -hmm. it really went full in 81 when I was touring with One More Time. Okay. People had heard about it in different cities and asked me to do a ghost night, which is a Monday night. So right. I work uh, eight shows a week with One More Time uh -huh. that was on tour. And um, then I started on Monday nights ghosting. Mm. And that's when uh, Great Ladies really started to sail because the reviewers picked up on it and shot it out there. And I, I didn't know it was going to do it. 30 and years later, Great Ladies was all over the world. And you traveled, traveled and toured all over the, all over the United States. I went States with the All Ladies Jazz Band throughout right. Switzerland and okay. Africa, North Africa, and places mm -hmm. like that, Tunisia, okay. all that. Yeah, with the All Ladies Jazz Band, and then I went back again with men, so I, I mm. alternated it. Okay. Um, but, God, you know, God has been so good to me, and I don't know what he's got in store for me now, because now I got so much original material. 
Oh, that we're, hasn't we're gonna been, get been to touched, that. We're gonna get you to know? that. You <laughs> know, yeah. one second. So here you are. You have you created this production mm -hmm. of the, the the music of these 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 um, women. Yes. That you didn't grow up with. Right. But you came. Mahalia was the only one that I I was more aware of because we had to listen to gospel. Okay. <laughs> right, I read somewhere mm -hmm. that you, your grandmama wouldn't let you listen to I anything to listen but to Mahalia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's how that came about. And it just took it a life of its own. And so you embraced these women then after that and your I respected music, them, yes. I honored them, and I wanted to bring truth. I couldn't be them. Okay. But the spirit of them has influenced me and many other singers. Right. Their tones, their manners, what they the groundwork they laid for us. Mm. And I had to respect that and honor that when I did those ladies. Absolutely. Sandra had to get the ego out of the way and, and project as much of the truth as I could. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Oh, and you know, we're gonna see a clip of you <laughs> in a in, in a very short while. And and the the, the <clears throat> you, like you said, the spirit that, mm -hmm. you, that comes through you yes. to to express Absolutely. the blues, right? And 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 gospel is, blues, is, is gospel, just, jazzy, what, originals, what? country, western, soul, R and B, right. any of it. I right. love it now. Okay, the blues. What does that represent to you? It represents the depths of my soul, mm -hmm. telling stories. Yes, whether it's a funny story or sexual innuendo, double entendre. Yes. Um, sometimes it's just a melody that puts you there, makes right. you go deeper than you do when you're knocking on wood and midnight hour, because right. that's a fun song, you yes. know. But when I sing a song that is more popular, like At Last or Every Beat of My Heart, right. Human, that song that Leonard Jones did, those songs will take you there. Yes. They will take you to a place you thinking about someone you knew experienced that or a place where you once were or a place where you are and you want to move from that. Did you see a difference in your audience in their response to you when you moved, when you made that shift from the R&B into this place? They were there. Yeah. My audience traveled with me everywhere in spirit, in participation, mm. supportive. Yes. If I sang double entendres, they were there because I did it with taste and class. I didn't take it all the way where it could go. Right. Um, anything that I've done, there's no way that I could have sustained without the kind of audience participation all over the country. Mm. The colleges I go into, even right. young people are collecting records and showing me them when I go back through their college. But one of the highlights of Great Ladies, the 20th year, I think it was, when they took me to the Apollo Theater to do there. Mm. The crowd was around the corner. Wow. And someone said, we haven't seen quite, quite crowds like this since maybe somebody like James Brown came through there. Right. And they would not hardly let me off of that stage. It was mm. a celebration. I talked, I pulled people up there, I made them sit. It was just like coming home, mm, make wow. a circle, I'm home, y'all, yes. right back where I started from. Wow, wow. How powerful is that? As, as, a, as an entertainer, oh, God. as someone who has a gift to mm, share mm. with people, I mean, how powerful? It, it, it's, it's more awesome than I can express, but I yes. know I have to say when I go in that place, I can be feeling so awful before I get there. I could not have slept maybe more than two or three hours because when that light goes down, I can't sleep. I might be up to sun up, okay. four o'clock in the morning. Right. But when I step back in that space, I invite God's presence through me, around me, as yes. me, silver and clarity in my voice, whatever, lead me, guide me. Right. And that's where I'm led. Mm. Oh, my. You know... Um we we have a clip. I want to show the clip mm -hmm. because we're, we're, you're, what you're evoking for people, they, they need to be able to experience this. But before we show the clip, mm -hmm. I want to say that you have Great Lady Productions, which has several 
uh, uh, productions that you have put together. Yes, yes. And, and what we've been talking about, Great Ladies of Blues and Jazz, yes. is just one yes. of, of several. And then so, we have a, a tribute to Mahalia Jackson. Yes. Then we have Me, Myself, and You. Right. Which delves in Broadway, blues, ever. Yes. Uh, bold and Brassy Blues is what it is. Uh -huh. Bold and Brassy. And I'm trying to remember what else we have. Um, uh, heart to Heart? Heart to Heart. That's more of a rhythm and blues reminiscence of the 50s and 60s okay. back there. Okay, mm -hmm. wonderful. So now, right now, we are going to show an excerpt from uh, Me, Myself, and You. How, uh, w what was that evening, Me, Myself, and You? How did you come up with that I, title? Because I, I want the audience to, to get to know me okay. and experience the inner beauty, the inside where I come from and take them on a journey with me to say, you can sing, you can talk, even if you can't sing, you can stand, you can clap your hands. Okay. I want to be intimate with my audience. That's the most intimate time I think I've spent with them in this show. Right. And I feel comfortable. I'll sit down and say, baby, welcome to my living room. We're having a potluck party up in here. <laughs> you know, this is big mama's house. So come on in and do exactly what you want. And this is, and, and people feel comfortable with that. Yes. They'll sing, they'll clap off beat. Uh, they're, they're, but that's what me, myself, and you is. No, it's right. just like you and uh, me sitting just here. Just sitting here having a conversation. Having a good time. And enjoying each yes. other. Yes. All right. Yes. And well, I'll sit down and say, Lord have mercy. Ooh, ooh my seniority getting ready to show. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, listen, when you hit that stage, uh, you know, we, we're not seeing seniority getting ready to show. We're going to see something else. So let's take well, a I'm look. Well, I'm 68. I just want to tell everybody that. And, but don't and make looking, me come over there. <laughs> and looking <laughs> fabulous. Can I say that? Thank you. We're gonna let's take a look. All right. Me, myself, and you. And you.
bravo. Thank you, darling. Bravo. Thank and you. you could hear that audience just co-signing. But that's it. And just right there with you and in, in, in every nuance well, of that when you song. invite your audience to participate, that, that everybody's got a little star quality in them. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Even if you can't sing on key, you got something in there something that you want to express. Right. And I invite all that. All right. Nice, girl. <laughs> <laughs> no, you not, because you got all that experience behind you. Oh, Lord. It makes you be able to step forward and say, okay, this is what I've got to offer. Mm. It's fantastic, fantastic. But we only have a few minutes left. And, oh, you know, shucks. we have not even touched on all of the credits you have in film. Theater. And on the, th in the theater. theater. You're just, just fantastic. I mean, just... Well, my just, first big Broadway show, Jewel, was, was uh, coming in... Broadway in the production of Raisin, the musical right. Raisin, yes. to understudy Virginia Capers and to do the comedic role of Mrs. Johnson. So I was multitasking. Wow. And we went on tour for a couple of years. When she got ready to retire, she took me on TV just like this. The producer didn't know. She said, this is going to be your next mother. Mm. And she announced it to the whole, and they gave me the role of mom. And look at that. Yep. All right. So I've been blessed. I mean, off Broadway, Broadway, mm. you know, um, Raisin, One More Time, Blues in the Night. The original Ma production of Black Rainey. and Blue, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Yes. 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 So much that you've done. Television, Homicide, Law and Order, Another Life, One yeah. Life to Live, Film, Round Lean Mid on Me. Really? Oh, gosh. Round Lean Midnight. on Me with Morgan Freeman. Yes. And then I, just before that, I had done the film in Paris, Round Midnight, with Dexter Gordon and Herbie Hancock. Okay. And I got to sing a blues in that because there was no song in the in the movie, and they asked for a song. Yeah, and I did uh, concierge with Michael J. Fox. I did a duet in Nashville with Anne Margaret. Wow. Yeah, okay. country western duet. So, you know. So you you've been out there mm -hmm. amongst them all. But I'll tell you, the highlight of my my performance is Please. the Vatican. Okay. When I got on that stage, and I remember that's one of the places that Mahalia wanted to go, and she never got there, mm. and her spirit was so much there with me. With you. I mean, the cameras were rolling, and when they finished, I was somewhere. I had they, they had to just take the camera away because I just couldn't come back. Wow. I just couldn't come back. Wow. Ooh, Jesus. Mm. I just, uh, mm. Oh. Okay. All right. <laughs> we need we another need half to, hour, need, Miss we Jewel. We need a part two of Sandra. I want to congratulate you on such a wonderful show, and thank you because we need this as artists. Oh. We don't get enough time to just let people really get to know to us. To get to know you, yeah. But yeah. I want somebody to really know who I am. Are we still on? We are. We how are. Much, how we, many minutes we, we got? We have about four minutes well, left. Well, Miss Jewel, at your last two minutes, I want everybody to know who the real Sandra Rees Phillips is, and, and I don't know if you got anything to say to them right now but I got a little trick for you you do yes ma'am well I, I think you know we've covered just about everything that that we can <laughs> except you are a composer also yes and you have all of this original music oh yeah that, they did what, one what of my do? original songs on Broadway in uh, rolling on the toba okay they did that uh, when we were there and they did um, take me take, take me as I am I think that was one of my boogie woogie kind of songs oh, okay they had me do that and uh, Jack a Harry did one of my songs in her act time for me to do my thing and and rolling on the toba is what you won the the drama league drama award league. for mm -hmm. right yes mm -hmm. okay yeah all right so what are you going to do with all this original material well i think i need a producer co-producer okay and i need to get it done yes because it's leaves of gold that's mm. what i call my songs leaves okay. of gold because they're stories uh, it's you, you can and I've already written one musical with twenty something songs co-written a musical called Opening Night with a friend of mine. Okay, and uh, we did it, did readings, did it all received very well. But now it's about the next step. The time Money. To, yes, time mm -hmm. to move to the next level. Yeah, with it's that. twenty-one original songs wow. in that show. Twenty-one. Yeah. Twenty-one original songs. Oh, Lord yeah. Jesus. Okay. You go, so I got a this, surprise for you. This is the, the talent is, this is it? just overwhelming. I, the talent. It's all yours. It's mine. You do what I you want to do. I just yes. want you and the world to know uh, this is a shell. This is a facade of who I am because you dress up when you're going out. You want people to see a, 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 like a gift, a package. But the real me, the real woman is this one. Mm. This is who Sandra Reeves Phillips is. Mama Sandra. There you Thank go. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. There you go. Don't <laughs> let me have to come over there. <laughs> <laughs> you you, you are a, a phenomenal spirit, a phenomenal talent. 
we, we want to see you on the Thank stage you. again so as, as soon as possible because, yes, what you bring is something that I think we all can connect with on so many different levels. I just bring the truth. You bring, and you bring it's love. It's the truth and you, love. I yeah. love what I do. I love touching hearts. Okay. And, and that's hopefully that. I leave a message behind. And that's what you do. You touch hearts. And it helps me, too. They yeah. touch me. Yeah. Thank you so much You're welcome, for being darling, who you are. Thank you for sharing what you, you do too, and, 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 and bringing the passion. Thank you. Passion for what you have to oh, all shoot, of us. y'all going to make me feel like a star. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't even get a chance that's to show all right. we're, your albums that's that we all have right. here. But we talk, people, but can, you know, yes, people can go online. They'll see some of this they'll stuff. They'll go online, yes. Mm -hmm. This is, this is uh, too many people in one bed. And it was. It was and very it was. prophetic. Okay. This album. I was 22, I think, at the time. And Black and Blue. In Paris. In Paris. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Sandra, Sandra, yeah. Sandra. All right, we, we will Ooh, do a part two because gosh. we've got much more to cover. Ah, so I where did the time go? Thank you for being where, with Did we have a good today. time? We did. I love the thank fact you, that baby. you made it here. Yes. And, and you know, as a producer, mm. let me say that I'm thinking of ways that I can bring you back to oh, the stage, too. Oh, bless you. Too. All right, I'll be listening about that blue show now. All right. All and right. We'll be working on it. Don't let me have to come back over here. No, no, no. <laughs> Sandra Reeves Phillips, everyone. What a treasure. What a treasure. And we thank you very much for being with us today. And we always ask that you think about what you want to achieve. And as Miss Sandra Reeves Phillips has shown us today, you take that dream, hold on to it, and go out and make it happen. Yes. Thank you. Amen. And we'll see you next time. Hallelujah.